Hello, and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. This is week 5, segment 8, and after we looked at how to use the editor efficiently to write code, how the compiler produces an executable, and how to use the make utility to build this executable using the compiler from multiple files, it's now time to take a look at a stage of the software development process that probably takes up the majority of your time, debugging. That is, when we write code, we only spend so much time on actually writing code, and a lot more time cursing and banging our head against the wall because the code doesn't do what we want. So let's take a look at what all can go wrong, and why we may want to consider using a tool like a debugger to improve our development process. Remember our welcome.c program from the very first video? When we compiled it, we immediately got an error. The error we encountered was a syntax error, where our compiler tells us that the characters we jammed into this file are not actually valid code. Specifically, we're missing a semicolon, but that's easy enough to fix. Here, let's use our good friend add and add the semicolon. There. Now our code compiles and we can run it. And yep, segfault. So, at this point, we're now at a stage of actual debugging. The code compiled, but it doesn't do what we want it to do, and we have to figure out what went wrong. We saw in our very first video how to fix this particular error, but let's take a look at another example. Here we have a program that attempts to implement the Fibonacci sequence. You know, the canonical code example to explain recursion. I'm sure you've seen it at some point in your CS career. Here's our implementation. We recursively call fib i-2 plus fib i-1 and so on. So let's give it a try. Hmm, this doesn't seem to terminate, so let's interrupt it. Now how do we fix this? To see what's going on when we run this program? Let's add a printf statement here, because that's how literally every programmer in the world troubleshoots their code. Write the file, recompile, run again, and that, that doesn't look right. Let's go back into the code. Maybe we should have initialized n here? Can't hurt to do that, so let's give that a try. Again, write the file, recompile, execute. Hmm, that's not much better. Back into the code. Oh, we probably meant to look at i, not n here. Let's try that. Great, now it's 1 all the time. But at least we may now notice that, wait a second, our loop condition never changes. Let's fix that. Recompile. And... Okay, better, but certainly still wrong. Zero is the wrong output. Let's try a different approach. All recursive functions really require a base case. And for Fibonacci, this is the core definition of fib0 equals 0. So instead of a while loop, we try this over here. And there. And that looks a lot more like a Fibonacci function. Compile again, and... Ah! Segfault! What the hell? You know what? Let's forget it for the time being. Let's go to another example. Remember our simple ls example from earlier? Here we extended it to also print the file owner in addition to the file name. This is a simple function. All we have to do is call get pwuid and print the username. Now 
There, that looks good. Let's try it out on slash temp. Okay. And now, on the test directory we have created for your midterm assignment. Oh, look at that! Yet another sec fault. Man, these seem to happen a lot. How annoying. So, every program we try to troubleshoot here yielded a sec fault. So clearly something is wrong here. Our programs have bugs. But how do we fix these bugs? No surprise, we have to debug the programs. And doesn't debugging a program mean that we get rid of the bugs? Well, not entirely. The process of debugging really is a bit more philosophical, if you will. It is determining what is and what isn't so. We know what we told the computer to do, but it's not doing that. Or rather, we think we know what we told the computer to do. But computers have this pesky habit of doing exactly what we told them to do, not what we had meant to tell them to do. And therein lies the core aspect of debugging. We have to identify where our assumptions and our understanding is wrong, which is why it can be so difficult. So how do we go about this? In this video, we've already seen a few of the most popular methods of debugging. For one, we try to look at the code and think real hard. Or we may read the manual pages or the compiler error messages or any other documentation. Then we come up with changes that might work, which really often isn't much better than guessing. That is, we jump to conclusions and try this and that, and then we try the other thing, and we have to constantly recompile our code and rerun it to see what the program actually does, as we just saw a minute ago. And to better inspect what the program is currently doing, what the value of certain variables are, or where in the code block we find ourselves, what do we do? That's right, we sprinkle copious amounts of printf statements. printf here, and printf x is now, and so on. But as I try to illustrate, this really is a bit of a painful method of debugging code. There's gotta be a better way. Well, guess what? There is. We could use a debugger. A debugger is a tool that lets us inspect a running program to look into the exact state of the program while it executes, or what it was doing when it crashed. Now that's a useful approach. Sure, real programmers may claim that they fix problems simply putting their thinking cap on by staring at the code harder than others, but in reality, just about everybody uses rapid iteration of guessing possible changes mixed with printf statements, when really, we all should be using a proper debugger. And that's what this series of videos will be about, using a debugger. In the next few videos, I'll show you a few simple examples of how to use the GNU debugger GDB to fix the programs that we failed to correct earlier, as well as how to trivially pinpoint exactly where and why a program failed. Once you've gotten the hang of this, you'll become a lot more efficient. Sure, you'll still use printf and guessing, and of course nothing replaces thinking and reading the docs, but there are a few circumstances where using the debugger will let you find and fix bugs a lot faster. So get your broken code examples ready and click right over to the next video. I'll see you in a minute.